William Colleen and his daughter are fighting for their house, a small terraced house in the working class district of Dublin Carbra. The plumber obtained a small mortgage during Ireland's construction boom, but then lost his job in the financial crisis and defaulted on his payments. Now the banks want to foreclose on his home. It's actually being paid, you know what I mean? And they gave us actually no time whatsoever. It was it was sent here maybe was actually brought here, say, on a Wednesday or Thursday, I think, and then you know we had to be over here for the following Wednesday. You know, it was, it's only a week's time, you know, and that's it. Basically, they wanted 20,000 up front off the erase, and there was no way that we could get 20,000. And we said we wouldn't be in a position to have 20,000, we wouldn't be in this situation in the first place if we had 20,000. Um, can we just continue paying the mortgage? We have that, we're able to pay that, we're able to keep up the payments. Um, and no, they weren't on it. According to Jerry Beads, the Colleen family is one of about 500,000. The building contractor has set up an organisation called the Land League to help people fight for their homes. He tries to find compromises with the banks. What's so idiotic is that the responsibility falls back on the state after these people are evicted. And as the, the bank has already been bailed out by the state, the state is now going to have to pay a second time around. The taxpayer is on the hook for it a second time around because in our constitution, these people are entitled to be housed by the state. And uh, so it's, it's economic madness. Irish taxpayers also have another problem. Ireland's banks offloaded the worst of their toxic assets into the state's bad bank vehicle, the National Asset Management Agency, or NAMA, which was set up to buy 71 billion euros of property loans in a bid to save the economy from collapse. Now NAMA is selling off the properties for hard cash. NAMA expects to yield a profit for the taxpayer. Um, do we want NAMA to continue its work as quickly as possible? Yes, we do. Do we want NAMA to continue to deliver a social dividend? Yes, we do. But it is important to acknowledge that NAMA is now likely to yield a profit for the exchequer. Ross Maguire says that the social dividends are not as high as they could be. He'd hoped to buy this modern Dublin theatre and transform it into a government-owned foundation. He raised 20 million euros but large private investors got there first. Nama didn't want to negotiate. When it was set up, it has a social purpose. It has never seen fit to be involved in a social purpose. It's just a giant sales agency now. It's completely, uh, it lacks transparency. Nobody knows what goes on inside there. We just know it sells and it has a high turnover of staff. Some of its senior staff go to work for investors then. So the whole thing is uh, unsatisfactory. Lacks transparency, unsatisfactory. No one at NAMA was willing to respond to the allegations on camera. But that's only part of the problem. NAMA only bought up large, commercially viable loans. It didn't buy up the debts of hundreds of thousands of small and medium-sized investors that the banks are still sitting on. Jerry Beads put 10 million into this building, and now the only thing to do is tear it down. We're looking at 50 half-built apartments, um, underground car park built, and the um, whole thing has been lying here since July 2009. Such investment ruins are ticking time bombs for the banks, and there are an estimated 200,000 empty houses and apartments in Ireland. The situation for the Irish banks is that you know they're all sitting on a pile of trash, um, and, uh, it's, and it's not getting any better. Though house prices are beginning to rise and Ireland seems to have got over the worst of the crisis, the echoes of the real estate crash will resonate for some time.